Hey guys, Mr. Mice is here, and I'm going to be going over 1-2B for AB Calculus. This is Calculus Essentials, and uh, we're going to be talking about inverse and piecewise functions. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself little here on the corner, so you can still see me, but you can see all the work that I'm doing, so let me do that now. All right, so here we go. First thing I need to talk about is what a one-to-one -one function is. Now, a one-to-one -one function is a function where there's only y for each x and vice versa, only one x for one y. This kind of graph passes what we call the horizontal line test, and a uh, horizontal line test will let us know if a graph, in fact, has an inverse function. So that's how we know if a, if a, gra if a function is one-to-one, -one, then its inverse is also a function of x. So let's take a look at inverse functions. Uh, the inverse function you can find by switching the x and y and solving for the new y. We often use this notation, f inverse of x. That means f inverse. And only, like I said before, only one-to-one -one functions have inverse that are also functions, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you some examples. Uh, one thing you gotta remember is that the domain and the range are flipped, so the domain of the regular function is now the range of the inverse function and so forth. Okay, I don't know why it went out there. Let's go on to my first example. So let's take a look at the examples from the previous video, um, numbers one through four, and determine which of these are, um, which is a function with an inverse. Okay, so we'll go to these previous examples, one through four, we'll take a look here. All right, so we take a look at these guys here. And our first problem here was a line. And a line, okay, this one right here, this one's a line. A line does pass the horizontal line test. The horizontal line only passes through this line once. Each time it doesn't pass more than once. So um, this is a function with an inverse. That is also a function. Number two, that, sorry, those are vertical lines. These are horizontal lines go like this, okay? Number two is a circle. Now, this was already not a function. So if it's not a function, then its inverse is not going to be a function. Um, necess well, possibly. Let's take a look. I, I forgot number four. So in this case, it does not pass the vertical line test. It's not a function. It does not pass the horizontal line test, the horizontal line test, because it crosses through twice. So its inverse is not a function. Number three is a downward facing parabola. Notice here we've got a horizontal line, it's the x-axis, and that crosses twice as well. So the inverse of this is not a function. Okay, number four. Notice here we've got not a function for our relation. However, a horizontal line, using the horizontal line test, it only passes ever once. So its inverse is going to be a function, okay? So inverse is a function, but its original relation is not a function. So how would we find this algebraically? How do we find an inverse algebraically? So what we're gonna do is we are going to just switch the X and the Y. So our first step is to, oops, is to switch the X and the Y. The way we do that, so I'm going to say instead of y equals 2x cubed minus 1, I'm going to say that x equals 2y cubed minus 1. All right, and then my second step is I'm going to isolate the y value. Okay, isolate y, so the y variable. So I'm going to add one to both sides. Divide by, by 2 and take the cube root of both sides. This, and then I'm going to use my inverse function notation. And there we go. Okay. All right, so those are inverse functions. Let's take a look at the second part of this video, which is piecewise defined functions. So a piecewise defined function is a function that has different pieces of its domain. So you, you can have um, different types of functions on one graph 
but just broken up into pieces depending on what its domain for that one part of the function is. So for example, if I have f of x equals, this is a piecewise function, where x f of x is defined as being the, the function x when x is less than or equal to 0. So just on that part of the graph or that part of the domain. But between 0 and 1, non-inclusive, it's going to be defined as 2 minus x, which is a line. For it, all values of x greater than or equal to 1 now, we have the function x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually graph that in my graph. So um, the function f of x equals x, that's going to be this part of the graph right here for x less than 0. So all values, this is x equals 0 right here, right? So all values that are less than 0, I'm going to have this graph right there, that line. Whereas in between 0 and 1, I'm going to have 2 minus x. So notice I have a hole in the graph here. And I would have a hole here too, except that this is defined for both lines. So x equals 1 here and 1 here will give me the same value of 1 there. And then lastly, I have the parabola. Notice there's a little bit of a curve here. y equals x squared for that last part of the domain. So let's go ahead and look at another example where we'll graph one of these piecewise functions. All right, so let's go ahead and graph this piecewise function. And we'll give the domain and range. So the domain is pretty easy for this because, well, the domain's um, kind of given. X less than 1 and X greater than or equal to 1. So that's all values. So we'll say all real numbers. You know, or you can write it as negative infinity to infinity. Uh, for the range, I'm going to graph it first. So let's go ahead and graph it. So we've got the absolute value function for X less than 1. So here's X equal to 1. So I'm going to go and plug 1 in here, and I'm going to get the absolute value of 1, which is 1. So my point is going to be at 1, 1, and it's going to be open because it's not defined there. And then from all these values that way, I'm going to have the absolute value graph that looks like that. Now I want the second part of this piecewise function. For x values greater than or equal to 1, I have x plus 2. So I'm going to plug in 1 here find my point which is going to give me three and I'm going to plot that point right there and for all values going this way now I have the graph x plus two so I'm just going to go up one and over one now to draw this line and there's my piecewise function all right so in this video I went over inverse functions how to find the inverse function and then how to graph and look at a piecewise function. In my next video, we'll talk about how to find zeros without a calculator. We'll talk to you soon, guys. See you later.